Hi everybody, and uh, the first thing you can see when we used to know the potential at the surface, but now we don't know the potential. We are just given the, the charge Q, Q at uh, different conductors, and we want to know whether our uh, our um, um, our solution is uniquely defined like before or not. So uh, the second uniqueness theorem states that in some volume V, like this, surrounded by conductors and containing specified charge density rho, so there are some conductors here, uh, like this conductor, and this conductor, and this conductor. And each conductor has some specified uh, charges, which is Q1, Q2, and Q3, uh, etc. Um, and there's some uh, charge density in the vicinity of these conductors, which is rho. It is, it is uh, specified. Uh, it says that the electric field E is uniquely determined. If Q on each conductor is given, if we have, if we know uh, the, condu uh, the conductors, the charges Q1 and Q2 and Q3. So if Q1 and Q2 and Q3 are given, then there is only one solution to this problem. There is only one E, one electric field that satisfies this problem. We don't care how those charges may uh, um, may distribute themselves on the conductors. There are no there are no different ways. Only one way exists. So we we only know we only know uh, the Q Q in each conductor, so you know you can just think of two scenarios like the first one, the charges are going to distribute uh, themselves in some some way, and there there is some other scenario, uh, that they are going to uh, distribute themselves in other way. No, there is only one solution to our problem. We don't care how they distribute themselves. If we know Q, there is only one solution. There is only one electric field that exists. So uh, what are we? Uh, what we're trying to to prove here is, are there two different solutions to our problem, E1 and E2, or only one solution exists? We are going to prove this um, using uh, the equations we proved uh, from chapter two, and some um, some vector calculus. Uh, let's get sorted. So let's assume that there are two different fields that satisfy conditions of our problem, um, E1 and E2, and they both satisfy. Gauss law in differential form. That means that the divergence of E1 is equal to rho over epsilon naught, and the divergence of E2 is also equal to rho over epsilon naught. Um, and they both obey Gauss law in integral form, and that means that the integral of E1 dot dA is equal to q over epsilon naught and also the diversion the integral of e2 dot da is equal to q over epsilon naught um, in this in this case we are we are integrating over each conducting surface you know like um, these surfaces so we're going to call uh, this surface like i i the surface and this is also i surface, you know, we are giving it just a number, which is i. So this is i conductor, and also this is i conductor surface, okay? And of course, this is going to be qi, and this is going to be qi. And also at the outer boundary, it happens to have that the integral of i of e1 by dA is equal to q total over epsilon naught in the integral e2 dA is equal to, those are vectors of course, uh, q total over epsilon naught and here you are integrating over the outer boundary okay so let's just examine uh, e3 like we like, like we've done before in the first uniqueness theorem e3 is equal to e1 minus e2 Okay, uh, and of course it obeys uh, Gauss law uh, in differential form, and divergence of E3 is equal to divergence of E1 minus divergence of E2, of, uh, E2 and uh, and they, they are equal. That means that divergence of E3 is zero. Okay, and if we if we integrate also in the region between the conductors, we get uh, integration of E3 dot. Da is equal to the integration 
e3 is equal to e1 minus e2 so you're going to in integrate e1 minus e2 dot d a and that gives us th those two integrations this and this and that is equal to zero okay um so um now we now we will we're going to use some some product rule uh which is okay uh, this is our product rule that we used um and we know that the divergence of e3 is equal to zero zero so that term is uh, is gone so we are left with this term and we know that the, uh, the 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 gradient of the potential is minus the electric field so that is going to be equal to this is minus e3 and this is uh, e3 so it's minus e3 squared and now if we integrate over the entire region between the conductors we are going to get the integration of of this divergence of v3 a3 in detail and tell here is a volume element differential element and this is equal to um, surface integral of, uh, of v3 a3 dot dA and how is that? Okay, that comes from the divergence theorem, because if we have some uh, divergence of, uh, of some vector, this is the vector, over, um, we, we're integrating over some uh, volume, uh, we get that uh, this, uh, this integration is equal to the surface integral of this vector dot dA, okay? And that, of course, is equal to the volume integration of this, of uh, minus E3, squared detail okay now we know that v3 is constant because potential is constant inside any conductor okay so we can just you know we can just uh, get this v3 out of the integration and that means that v3 integration of e3 dot da is equal to um it, it is equal to something which is equal to this integration volume integration minus of course uh, of e3 squared detail okay um now now we can exploit this fact we know that the the integration of e3 dot da is equal to zero like we proved earlier the integration of e3 dot da yeah here it's equal to zero okay so we can just um sorry yeah so we can just say that this uh, this integration is equal to zero so we are we're left with this expression the integration of e3 squared detail was equal to zero and we can't have this in real life we can't have electric field that is squared and it's also equal to zero because there there isn't number that uh, you can uh, keep adding adding to it adding to it and, and multiplying by uh, differential volume elements and then you get a zero you can't get zero the only case that this integration is equal to zero is that e3 is equal to zero and that means that means that since e3 is equal to zero you have e1 equal to e2 everywhere and that proves our theorem okay that's it for today um see you next time